Hi family, I'm Dr. Brenda Warburiosti. I'm a licensed daycare provider, a published author of three children's books, an advocate, a consultant, a veteran's wife, and a mother. If you need help setting up your daycare service or just looking for great ideas to incorporate a play-based learning approach as well as learn about research-based solutions to issues impacting education, this is the channel for you. Subscribe, share, like. Thank you. Virginia's Early Learning and Development Standards, BET to 5 Learning Guidelines. And this is by the Virginia Board of Education. And then here we come to the contents. I have the digital copy and I also have the physical copy. So, and I've read through it but i would like to do this you know so that we can all talk about these guidelines together um you see the on the content is just giving you an idea of what's in the guidelines in, um the grounding knowledge and and i'm going to do this in different parts because it is a lot to digest at one time it's a lot of information and these are open day cares, um series you if you're opening a daycare you should know these guidelines you should have them you should have access to them you know so that you can um, work with the children and um it, look at all the acknowledgements this 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 um document was worked on by a lot of people a lot of experienced people so professionals from different walks of life um, and, and um, it's an amazing document I mean when I was reading it on um, the very first time I was whining you know wow 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 throughout the document so it's an amazing document and, and you need to know what's in it if you want to help your daycare kids so the introduction the first five years of a child's life involves significant impact on the developing brain and early learning. The concepts and skills that children learn during their early years also lay the groundwork for a successful transition to kindergarten and all other later schooling. So Virginia is committed to providing, you know, I, I can't always go back when I'm scrolling, so I'll just keep reading. Virginia is home to over 500,000 ch uh, children ages birth through five. Many of the Commonwealth's young children have access to early settings and experiences that are well equipped to support development and learning. So um, it, this is just in a nutshell telling you that there are so many thousands of children in in virginia that are within this age range that need you know that need the care that need the education that need the learning that these guidelines are going to help us with okay so the goal of early care education is to help all children prepare for kindergarten and for a good start in life through high quality early education or early intervention programs virginia elevates both care and education as important aspects of what educators attend to in their work with young children so regardless of the setting in which the work takes place many factors contribute to program quality including the provider's understanding of how children learn and grow throughout early childhood and what adults can do to best support the developing child virginia defines an early childhood provider as any adult responsible for the early care and education of young children including parents families caregivers educators and program leaders as primary examples so anybody at all who who has access to children you know should know these guidelines because that's how they can help take care of them grounding knowledge and guiding principles at the core of the elds is the belief that all children in virginia deserve to build on their capabilities and deserve to start school ready to learn related to that conviction is the belief that 
early childhood caregivers and educators need access to clear, actionable guidance that supports their understanding of how children develop and the associated skills that emerge as they actively engage with their environment. So this document is, is like a guide, it's like a roadmap, you know. Um, it, it intentionally starts with development at birth. What infants and toddlers come to know and do is inextricably linked to the ways in which adults are able to tune into the child's curiosity and interest in the environment. When adults give words to feelings, name what they are seeing, ask questions and so forth, they are ever expanding what infants and toddlers come to know about themselves and their world. You see, um, I, I just want to mention that sometimes people feel babies don't need to learn. They are not learning. They are just babies. They don't need the learning. But they do because, like you see, every experience that a child has, as young as they are, that's how much they will gain. That's how much they'll benefit from that experience and learning. So the grounding knowledge. We know that during the years from birth through age five, and particularly the years from birth through three, the young child's brain is growing and developing. The capacity for all later learning, you know, um, and this is by Schoenkopf Schoen and Phillips 2000. So the brain's growth is supported or on the mind as a function, you know, of the various experiences of the child, okay? So what happens or what does not happen during this child's first five years makes an important difference that will influence the child's life and learning well beyond the early childhood period. Now, guiding principles of this. Over the course of a child's early years, we begin to know them by paying careful attention to the unique individual they are becoming. Supporting learning for all children means understanding how we generally expect a child to develop and change. You know, supporting learning for an individual child means paying careful attention to whether and how the child progresses. Considering whether something is interfering with the child's development and learning ways to help a child whose growth is not unfolding as we typically expect. Amazing. An available responsive adult is the most important support to the young child's learning. So children are born wired to learn, but learning does not occur in a vacuum. Adults activate, they motivate, they guide, they interpret and support the child's exploration and understanding of their world. Parents are children's first and most important teachers. So the second one, development occurs with some predictability, but children progress through their development at their own rate and in their own way. So we can describe how development generally unfolds which skills are likely to come before others and when, but a child may skip over some steps altogether. They may progress in one area more quickly or slowly than others. So the, the development of a child is unique to that child. That is why you cannot compare children. You know, this is a five-year-old and that's a five-year-old. This five-year-old is reading like they're in third grade and the other five-year-old is not reading well. You know, you cannot compare children. Instead, you can discover what each child needs at a particular stage and help them through those milestones. So that's what these um, guidelines are talking about. Um, learning is a dynamic phenomenon integrated across all areas of development. Yeah, it is. You know, um, that's why you have people say the holistic child. So the child is learning social, the child is learning um, physical development, um, motor skills, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, look at that. 
enables them to persist through the challenge of building with blocks as they develop a ma- as mathematical thinkers to quiet themselves in order to listen to others as they grow in social skill and in collaboration. These are all learnings. Early learning will require special attention, support, and strategies for children with developmental disabilities or delays. If you have these guidelines, you know, and um, you see what a child can do at a particular stage, and they are not doing it, and it looks like they are delayed, it doesn't mean they will not get there, but you can notice these things real quickly and get that child some intervention. And, and what it says here is about you know, mostly speech, I have noticed is one major thing that I've, I have um, encountered in, in my early childhood um, profession through the years. Some children do not speak early or some children have some kind of speech and, and you have to notice that early so that you can get that child the intervention they need. You know, other things are visual or hearing impairments or social skills, all kinds of stuff. So this is very important. A child's home culture and language must, they should have put that in capital letter, be recognized, respected, and accommodated in the early learning processes. You cannot say, oh, uh, you're this tribe or you're that tribe, and now you're an American, you have to speak English or, you, you know, I mean, you have to recognize where that child is coming from. Recognizing where a particular child is coming from can help you understand why that child is the way they are and how you can teach them to understand and learn better, you know. So I'll just read a little bit of here. It says... Um, Language is only one aspect of culture, but language requires its own considerations. Children who are multilingual learners, for example, need ongoing connection to and learning in their home language as they learn English as their second or subsequent language. Amazing. Both multilingual learners and English learners will also benefit from caregivers and educators who give careful thought and planning to how concepts and skills will be introduced. And I've had many of these students with multilingual families, and you do have to understand that one thing I've noticed about them sometimes they do not speak English. Uh, you know, because more multilingual families teach their children their language before English. So when they come to school, they do not speak English fluently. And you have to understand where they're coming from if you want to target what they need to learn. So other factors in the child's environment will have an impact on learning. And, and that's, of course, true. If the child is poor, if the child is sick, God forbid there's trauma, you know, all of this can affect the way a child learns. And, 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 and it's, it's, um, it's important that you as an educator targets all of this. So young children learn through play. Uh, this, this is what I preach over and over again on my channel. And that's what I also tell this to all teachers that I come in contact with, you know, when I do webinars and, and trainings. Play alone or with other children is the child's laboratory. Playing provides children with opportunities to imagine, question, investigate, collaborate, negotiate, practice, and discover. Playing is how young children learn. Caregivers and educators observe and guide children in play to ensure that children continue to expand their learning as they play. Technology and digital experience can have a place in early learning, but should not be the primary medium for learning. Children aged 2 and under should have little or no reliance on digital devices for their entertainment or learning. It is undeniably the case. However, the most young children see and interact with the digital world, even if only through a parent's cell phone. From a very young age. The imperative for adults who are supporting young children's experiences of digital technology is, you know, it's absolutely important. Okay, so about culturally responsive practice, you know, 
you know you are establishing expectations for culturally responsive practice among virginia's early childhood workforce is critical to supporting the effective delivery of care and and instruction to virginia's diverse early learning population so these culturally responsive caregivers and educators see cultural differences as assets not as a disadvantage you know validate the inequities impacting children's lives cultivate relationships beyond the classroom or learning space anchored in affirmation mutual respect and validation believe that all children can succeed and communicate high expectations for all children engage in reflection of their beliefs behaviors and practices utilize children's cultures as vehicles for learning he who has ears let them hear challenge racial and cultural stereotypes prejudices racism and other forms of intolerance injustice and oppression mediate power imbalances in classrooms and learning spaces based on race culture ethnicity and class communicate in linguistically and culturally responsive ways and collaborate with families and the local community you know achieving education equity that is eliminating the oh man I'm sorry guys, this is so fast, I can't always go back. Okay, so how to use Virginia's Unified Early Learning and Development Standard. It is designed for adults who care for children. You know, it is a reference to help caregivers and educators. This document is not intended to serve as a developmental checklist, an assessment or a curriculum. Not all children will demonstrate every skill in the same manner or in the same way. Indicators reflected in each focus area are examples and not meant to be exhaustive of what we see in our children. It is critical and that educators understand that utilizing valid and reliable screening and assessment tools is essential when concerns about a child's development surfaces. So the ELDS can be used by individual caregivers and educators, early childhood programs to understand how children build skills and and understanding in different areas of development from birth to age five, okay? Discern whether a particular child is learning and growing according to general expectations and um, identify topics to training to help all providers continually grow and improve as early childhood educators. The ELDS are in short, the bottom line of what we should aim for each child in Virginia and the world, not just in Virginia, a child whose development and learning generally aligns with their behaviors and skills. Design of the Virginia Early Learning and Development Standard document. These standards organize information into areas and five areas of development. And why not reflective of the true integrated nature of development? This organization aims to help providers know what to encourage and what to look for as they support and keep watch over a child's development and learning. The areas of development include approaches to play and learning, social and emotional development, communication, language and literacy development, health and physical development, cognitive development okay so each of these areas are also arranged into sub um, areas and focus areas and each focus area in turn details indicators that describe a developmental progression of how we expect a child to change across six overlapping age bands from birth to age five so as you as you use this document just remember they are not guidelines to milestones you know they are not um how every how every child should act at a particular um point in time you know but they are just guidelines so that if you notice a child's gonna need intervention you have to get that child that intervention as early as you can because the earlier a child gets intervention the better the services they will get will be you know and for them 
for that individual child and um there's going to be a part two probably a part three of this and i just want to say you should please watch out for that and um stay tuned there's a lot more coming and if you're a parent you're an educator you're a guardian you're anybody who's working with children who's around children who's taking care of children this is very important for you to watch so that you can see how to help those kids thank you so much for watching and um stay tuned like i said and i appreciate you all peace out